This is your spiritual game plan, and I am your host, Sherry Fletcher. Change, it happens to all of us. You've invested your time and energy into an important role, sometimes for years, and then suddenly it's time for you to move on. Maybe you've worked hard on a dream, and now your path is taking a new turn, but the dream isn't going with you. Perhaps you've raised your kids and they've moved on, but now your empty nest is filled with parent care. Or maybe you're in the middle of diaper changes and laundry piles. If you find yourself asking questions like, where do I fit in anymore? Am I even relevant? How do I find my purpose now? You are in the right place. This is a show for women in a season of transition. I believe that while your roles in life will change, Your purpose is eternal. I'm here to help you understand just how intentionally you were made by a creator with a game plan. Through interviews and inspirational guests, we'll discover ways to help you unlock the purpose God placed in you, develop a game plan for your life calling, and embrace the intentional masterpiece you were created to be. Today, I will be speaking with Sharon Norris Elliott, author, speaker, astute Bible teacher, educator, consultant, agent, and founder and CEO of Life That Matters Ministries. We will be talking about her latest book, A Woman God Can Bless. We will explore your identification with or your participation in speaking edifying words versus corrupt communication, truth-telling versus lying, exercising restraint versus anger. Being a woman God can bless is when we realize and respect God's position and then we put ourselves in a position to be blessed. Sharon, I am so excited to have you be able to bless my guests today. How are you? I'm doing well, Sherry. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm so excited. This is going to be fun. So I got to hear you speak um, at a writer's conference, West Coast Christian Writers, um, back in February of 2020. Right. That was wow. the last live thing, you know, yeah. that I went that I went to. Um, yep. Where we were shut away. Well, I was talking to Amy uh, Carroll, and I loved how she said it. She says, "We have not been shut down. We have been deployed." So oh. you and I have been deployed, and we are spreading the message via Zoom and podcasts, and so we are not shut down. Definitely. We- are deployed. So I am so glad that I get to share your message with my guests today. And I would love it if you would just introduce yourself a little bit about your family. um, And how did 2020 end up shaping your ministry? Oh, my goodness. Okay. (laughs) Well, I'm Sharon Elliott. And um, I'm married. And um, my two boys, well, we're blended. Um, My youngest are uh, my two, Matthew and Mark. And um, they're in their 30s. That is not even possible. Uh, (laughs) And so, um, yeah, I've recently retired from teaching. Um, I had a lovely 35-year career teaching high school English most of the time and a whole bunch of other stuff Um, in Christian schools my whole career. And then I've also been writing now for 30 years. I'm a Bible teacher, uh, mainly, um, but I've also taken up the mantle, I guess, of uh, teaching writers. And so I, I teach writers. I'm a book developer, an editor, and a literary agent. Wow. And I love Jesus. Perfect. <laughs> so I like to ask a couple fun facts just to kind of get to know you a little bit. And I didn't know until I looked into a little bit that you have children, a book for kids. And it's, I yeah. think, is it, did you say it was going to be possibly a series or there'd be some more coming up? Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, um, why I get into trouble is yes. the first of a seven book series. That's really theology for little kids, for kids who are churched. Um, and they already know, yeah, Noah and the Ark, yeah, Samson and Delilah, yeah, you know, they know those stories, but do they know about the sin nature? Um, so that's what this first story, you know, is about. Here I sit in my room, I'm in trouble again. How I hate these timeouts. Seems I never can win. 
Seems I just have to try it when daddy says no, or when mom says, don't do that. A thought tells me go, right? <laughs> <laughs> Is that from one of your own children? <laughs> no, really. This one, this one, well, yeah. All right. That was my youngest, <laughs> who is now the love, the wonderful father of my three wonderful, beautiful grandkids. So um, so yeah, the the books talk about things that our little ones um, need to know. So my, my agent is looking for a publisher for those for those books. So it's the sin nature, you know, things like what is communion, mm. um, special church snack, um, um, baptism, um, greed. Mm. I want what I want when I want it right now. Um, death. Mommy cried this morning. So things like that, right, yeah. um, that we're explaining to children in these really fun books. That's awesome. And one of the things too, um, when we're reading those kind of things to our kids, even though they are elementary, they are powerful to us as parents reading it and reliving it through a child's eyes. It just confirms our childlike nature in Christ. And I just think that's gonna be a great series. So can't wait to see that come out. I do have one question I ask every single guest and that is looking back in your life, how far back can you see the very purpose you were living out today in who you've always been? I can see it back to when I was about three. I don't know. I guess it was about three. My dad, uh, my dad was a pastor, uh, but he wasn't a pastor yet, uh, or the senior pastor of the church yet. And he used to have Sunday school for the kids on the block. And it was my job to line the chairs up. And I remember taking that so seriously, like it was so important for me to line those chairs up. And when I look back at that, I was in Christian service, <laughs> yes, you were. Getting, the, getting the home church, right, ready. But just thinking about how important that felt to me, um, I cannot remember not serving some kind of way, you know, in, mm -hmm. in church, that home Sunday school. And then of course, being in Sunday school at church and always a part of everything, right? The youth group and the children's choir and the youth choir. And I lit the candles. I did about everything, but as a PK, as a preacher's kid, you know, you would, but all those things were, were important to me. So I'm thinking my earliest memory is about serving. I love that. Yeah. That's a great purpose. And I love looking back and just seeing how God, you know, had that in us from right from the beginning. Yes. And it's just part of who we were created to be. So thank you. So I have invited you today to talk about a book you wrote called A Woman God Can Bless. And I'm really excited about that book because it, it's having a very pro profound impact on me currently. Um, and especially because you talk about, if in the book, you talk about Ephesians, um, you use Ephesians 4, 17 through 32, right. mm -hmm. which I'm leading a Bible study on Ephesians right now. And that was the scriptures that the women in the group asked if we could memorize. And I was like, no way, I'm reading a book all about this. Um, but it's called A Woman God Can Bless. And I'm just thinking, well, aren't we all blessable? Now, it's funny because that was a big thing, right? With the publisher, you know, even. And, and I stuck to my guns for this particular title because, uh, yes, God can do anything. But as we get to know him, we come to find out that he does not do everything. Mm. And one of the things he does not do is allow us to use him as a punk. Okay, so God is not Santa. Um, God is not our little, you know, let me just go ahead and, and live my life. And then I'm going to call on you, you know, when it's time for you. Mm. That is not God's position. And so having the title say, a woman God can bless means we realize and respect God's position so that we put ourselves 
in the position to be blessed. And then yes, God can bless us. Just think about our own children. You know, when our, we would love to give our children everything they, they want and need and can't even think about. We just want to bless them. We love them so very much. However, when they act a fool, I'm not giving you that. Are you, are you kidding me right now? The way you're acting, <laughs> right? And I just, in my reading last night, I wish I had um, brought that particular verse with me, but um, I was reading last night and I believe it was either, it was probably in the Psalms where it has something to say about God blessing our actions. Just like in James, right? Faith without works is dead, being alone. And so when we, when we do, when we act out, when we live out what God has asked us to live out, like I said, we put ourselves in a position to be blessed by God. And then yes, God can bless us. So that's, that's why it's not a woman God will bless right? Or a woman God blesses. It's a woman God can bless. I really like that perspective. Yeah. I like how you, you, you know, we've got to align ourselves. We do that in everyday life. If we want opportunities, we need to align ourselves with those opportunities that can take place. Mm -hmm. We can't just sit at home and expect, you know, the job to come to us or the opportunities to come to us. We need to be out in alignment so those opportunities can happen. And you you talk about that in your book with an acronym, um, R-I-S-E. Can you break that down for us? Yeah. And now I'm going to read it myself <laughs> so that I make sure that I don't miss <laughs> exactly what I want. So the R at the end of each chapter, right? And we, we talk about, and we'll get into, I guess, the some of the specifics, but um, at the end of each chapter, we talk about the R, we need to make a radical change. So what is the radical change that God is asking us to make in respect to what I've just read about this particular verse? Okay, so I, I obviously don't know what God's saying to you, but I'm going to give that question every time, right? What is the radical change? And then the I is initiated by God. So now don't just decide, ooh, I want to change this. Okay, God tells you that, but now go into the word and find scripture that is going to back up exactly how. It's sort of like um, the radical change. Okay, I want you to take a new way to get to work, uh, but there might be five ways to go. So now initiated by God, that direction is which specific okay, way do I want you to carry this out? And then the S is submission to the Holy Spirit's direction. So still, right? I'm still listening as I go, right? As I go, like when I taught my kids to drive, right? They actually had to get in the car and, and do the things in order for me to say now, okay, slow down, you know, don't, don't take that turn so widely, those kinds of things. So continue to be under the Holy Spirit's control in submission to him. <clears throat> and then the E is emergence into full understanding. You always learn when you share something with someone else. Mm -hmm. So um, continue with, with your learning as you share with someone else. Um, and you have now emerged into full understanding of what you're supposed to do about this particular point. Thank you. And I like it's rise because it's stand up and do something. It's like, get up mm -hmm. and, and get out and do it. And so um, it's lots of metaphor thinking here, which is what I like. <laughs> <laughs> and while I was reading your book, because you talk about, um, you know, some of the things we have to take off. And I was thinking, yeah, if I want to be a light, it's kind of like if I were a light, but I just like to keep my winter coat on and over that light and cover it up. But the things in my life that are truly keeping me 
from shining. And you tell us that, you know, Paul is telling us that there's areas in our life that in order for God to actually live out the very purpose he created us to, to do, we need to take off the futility. Yes. And so uh, in this book, what are some of the areas in our life that we need to take off? Well, one of the main things that, that <laughs> Paul talks about, and it is so, oh, what can I say? It is, it is such a big deal for us as women deals with our mouths. <laughs> oh, I know. So we have to take off corrupt communication, corrupt mm. communication, corrupt. Obviously it, it's even a word that sounds bad, you know, corrupt. When something is corrupt, it's bad. And so I take that uh, part of the passage it says uh, putting off corrupt communication right we're supposed to put on words that edify all right so just that part of the passage takes like four chapters or five chapters in the book because i break that up into how we speak corruptly to our husbands and in that relationship and talk about just that relationship in one chapter and then how do how we speak corruptly to our children and, and what becomes of that and why we need to change that and how we can change that, right? And then I talk about uh, another chapter that we're speaking corruptly to parents and other family members. So I break it up, right? Um, so, so that there leaves, now what's there another scripture? So that we are without excuse. There you go, <laughs> right? That we really have to clean up the way we speak to all of those segments if we're going to put ourselves in a position where we want God to speak favorably mm. into our lives. I guess he can't speak favorably into our lives if we aren't speaking favorably out of our lives. And and that's humbling because that's kind of where that's where I'm at. I, I'll I'll admit it. Um, that's a struggle I have immensely. Um, you know, Satan loves to have those items that I've taken off <clears throat> for me when I get home at the door. It's kind of like I've been out doing something, and I come in the You've door. You're doing Satan, God's work. I'm doing God's work, and and I come in, and Satan's got that coat of you know here you are. It's waiting for you. It's nice and comfy. And, you know, I can be out with others, blessing, sharing the message, having this time with you and me, and I can hit stop record and go out there and get frustrated that my dishes aren't clean and this and that's not done. And what have you done all day? And so guilty. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but but that, what's hard then is in this in the same scripture, Paul says you can be angry, but do not sin. That's right. So how does that work? So um, anger out of control, right, is, is us trying to take care of another situation <laughs> without God, mm. all right? And so um, I love the fact that God says, I can be angry. <laughs> yeah. It's actually an emotion that he gave us it's okay to be angry, but do not sin in your anger. So mm -hmm. God wants us to evaluate the why. Why am I angry about this or this or this? Okay. Um, there's times for righteous indignation. Jesus showed it to us, right? He beat folks out of the temple twice. <laughs> okay. Um, and why? Because it was his house and it was his father's house. And there were certain things that just were not going to happen with his father's house. And so his anger was justified. His response was justified. And he was able to move on. And we know Jesus was without sin, right? There are times when you need to be angry and you need to take care of what that is. Like, for example, if you are being abused, 
you get to be angry about that. And then you get to do something about that for you. What do you get to do? You get to remove yourself however you need to from that situation. Now, do you have to go back with a sawed off shotgun? No. <laughs> like, now you're crossing the line, right, into sin. And so um, that, that chapter in the book, right, talks about how and when and the whys of being angry, yet don't sin. In the majority of the cases when we are angry, we get to turn that over to Jesus. And he says, vengeance belongs to him. He'll repay. Now, who do you think can repay somebody the best? You <laughs> or him, right. right? And so lean on, lean on your heavenly father, let him handle it, move on, you will not develop the ulcer, mm. right? Yeah. Because the majority of the time, people you're mad at, they're not even thinking about you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> they're moving on, going about, <laughs> going about their business. And that's making you even more angry because what are you doing? Concentrating on them. Yeah. Right, let them alone. So I think yeah. that answered your question. Yeah, no, it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> I, um. I, for myself, I've always thought you only have, you're only allowed one mad card today. One mad card. So you have to decide, <laughs> is this worth my one mad card? No, no. <laughs> right. Keep moving, keep moving on. But I like that. Thank you. So you, we, we're talking as we've entered a new year um, and we've gone through so much stuff. We're still going to probably go through some more frustrating stuff. Lots of, you know, device in our name, in our culture, in our you know, in this world, but in this state, you know, families are even, even amongst themselves are arguing over so many differences of opinions, churches are being divided um, on viewpoints. And so being a Christian woman is not, not being able to share a differing opinion. Mm -hmm. um, but when we look at Ephesians 4 verses 31 and 32, um, we are told to put all bitterness, wrath, anger, slander, malice away from us to be kind and tenderhearted, forgiving um, as Christ forgave you and me. So as we close our time uh, together, what takeaway do you want to give the listeners on how can a, God, a woman of God um, be blessed during these times, um, be able to share the opinion, be able to be a force for God without breaking the the you know, the Ephesians for, um, but still be able to share an opinion and be blessed, I guess, is what I'm asking. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about that word opinion. Mm. And I think that is a major issue. Okay. Um, I am only, how can I put this? I am only uh, allowed as a believer to have the same opinion that God has on anything. So I am uh, required to line up what I believe and feel with God's word. Okay, so God's word, bottom line of God's word is God's word is truth. So we must, as believers, as Christian women, we must only carry opinions that line up with what is true. We cannot allow ourselves to get sucked in to anything that is a lie. And so I can have an opinion, <laughs> if I have an opinion that is opposite God's word, for example, that, that's not an opinion I get to have. It, no matter what society is saying, no matter what anybody else is saying, um, I only get to believe and say what God says. 
you know, on anything. Yeah. On anything. Um, I know our racial divide has been ridiculous, you know, in this country. <laughs> okay. But um, the truth is, we are all um, sinners. Number one, we all need a savior, right? Mm -hmm. And we are all human beings. Yeah. That's the truth. And so to, to function, say as though I, because the color of my skin am better than someone else or worse than someone else or not as deserving or I'm more deserving, that is not the truth. And if we, if we live by any of those divisions, we are not putting ourselves in a place where God can bless us. <laughs> You know, so um, I think maybe we all, as the body of Christ, need to get back to, okay, what does God say mm -hmm. about any of these issues, any of them? And you know what? Um, there are some issues that God is not concerned about at all, <laughs> that is not even in his wheelhouse. <laughs> right? He is concerned that his son is glorified. And the division that there is right now in the church in America, Jesus is not glorified by that. You know, you have, you have, you know, pastors getting up in the pulpit and cursing people, you know, who just disagree with the point of view. <clears throat> Excuse me? really you know yeah. so we've got to be we've 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 got to we're ambassadors of the kingdom of god yeah i liked your point i would love you to share it about the difference between um the church and america being two, <laughs> two separate entities i really liked the point you said on that yeah yeah i god is neither democrat nor republican sorry praise God. And, and this is not a theocracy. <laughs> America is not a theocracy. America is a democracy, right? Mm -hmm. Big difference. Everyone in government is not trying to lead people to God. No. Okay. So, so we need to stop, you know, thinking you know, your church, your church is not going to line up with democracy, you know, big issue, big issue, abortion, right? Number one, that is not the only issue that exists, right? It is clear in scripture that we should not be killing. We should not do murder. That's clear. In a democracy, if a democracy decides that that's legal, that has nothing to do with the church. Mm. The church just keep, needs to keep preaching God's word. We need to be loving women um, mm -hmm. who are finding themselves in crisis pregnancies, okay, mm -hmm. or what pregnancies they don't want or what have you. We need to be concerned about the hearts of women. When, when a woman realizes that this is a child, who cares if the government says it's legal or not? She's not gonna kill her baby. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. it, it's pretty much that simple. And someone who would go along, you know, and, and have an abortion anyway, right? She's gonna have to deal with her sin in the same way that someone who curses her husband out and doesn't speak, <laughs> you know, speaks corruptly to her husband is going to have to deal with her sin. Right. And so we need, we need to stop it. We need to just stop it. Right. right. Um, and focus, focus on keeping the main thing, the main thing. Yes. And thank you. I love that. When I read some of that, that you wrote that, I was like, oh, I, she's got to share that 
with the listeners because it's so it, you can see the passion in your in your heart for that. And so as we close, what is the what is Jesus priestly prayer in John 17 that we can be reminded of? The main the focus of Jesus prayer is that they may be one. Yes. That was the focus. You know, whoever he was he was saying, God, those who you gave me, you know, I'm not even praying that you take them out of the world. In other words, I'm not praying that you take them out of their struggles. Mm -hmm. I'm praying that you would keep them. Because as you keep them, God, in their struggles, they are going to be witnesses unto me. And and when I be lifted up, right? Mm -hmm. Right? All men are going to be joined. And so as we function as one right in every area in yeah. every area of our lives as we start looking at the realities um and functioning as believers right um yeah. there's <clears throat> there should not be a problem with me moving in next door to you please do see I know. Wouldn't that be fun? That would not, you, you see what I mean? I mean, yeah. little stuff that we kind of eh, take for granted. There should not be a problem with my children going to school with your children. There should not be a problem. You know, uh, come on, please, please come and visit my church. You're going to love the music. <laughs> yes. You know, it's just, we need, we need to stop being so divided yeah. and Jesus pray. If Jesus prays that over us, we mm -hmm. need to get back to that. Back and, to that. and until then, we might not be women that God can bless. Mm -hmm. See, that's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time out today and, and talking with me and blessing my listeners. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I had a great time and hey, we can talk like this all the time. Well, I'm going to hit pause and we'll just keep going. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I hope you were blessed by my time with Sharon Norris Elliott. I loved how she pointed out that we are all sinners. We all need a savior. We are all humans and we are all ambassadors for the kingdom of God. We need to get back to what God says about these issues. And his main concern is that his son is glorified. All of the ways to connect with Sharon Norris Elliott will be in the show notes as well as how to purchase her book, A Woman God Can Bless. If you have not subscribed to this podcast, please do so. That way you will not miss up and coming episodes. And when you leave a rating and a review, that helps me serve you better as well as helps others find the podcast. During today's episode, did a friend come to mind who you know would be blessed by this message? If so, would you share this link with them? Listeners like you sharing links with others is how this podcast can reach more people. I'd also love to have you subscribe to my email list. I will send a weekly update with a little more of a personal touch and information about new episodes before they come out. Thank you so much for tuning in to Your Spiritual Game Plan, the podcast that helps you understand God has a plan and you have a purpose in it. <laughs>